Hey, good afternoon and happy Thursday. I hope you are staying dry if you're in the Pacific Northwest here this last week or so. It's been a little wet to say the least. We are definitely in the fall season. Um, so this week, it's going to be a little quiet, in all honesty, ahead of uh, some big numbers coming up with inflation and jobs week coming up next week. Uh, but we, nonetheless, we're going to cover a little bit around GDP, uh, consumer confidence jobs, and a great question of the week about, you know, basically what choices typically um, may prohibit folks from saving properly for retirement. My name is Brandon Steele, financial advisor with Mainsail Financial Group here in Bellevue. And our goal every Thursday is to bring to you the market news, the data, the trends that we're watching, and hopefully weed out a bit of the noise along the way. So again, this week, maybe uh, rightfully so after a lot last week with the Fed, was a little more quiet. Uh, that said, there were still some really important data points to touch on. Today, on Thursday, we had GDP revision come out, um, and basically it came out the same as the last reading. There were a few folks who were expecting a slight tick up in that revision, but uh, but that did not uh, pan out. And then we also had initial jobless claims come out today, slightly below expectations, but basically in line with uh, last last week's data there as well. So not a not a whole lot to uh, you know to, to digest there. However, uh, earlier in the week, we had consumer confidence numbers come out and those numbers were down again. So I think this is important to highlight. We've had this, you know, this big boost of consumer confidence uh, really for quite some time, especially going back, you know, a year and a half or so. And uh, and we've seen a couple data points now where consumer confidence seems to be coming down a little bit. So certainly showed here in this month's numbers as well. Be sure, before we get to our question of the week, be sure to tune in next week because tomorrow we get PCE data. So it's like as soon as we're done talking about the Fed, we're right back to talking about the Fed. I get it, but it is really important. Uh, PCE data, this is one of the top inflation measures that the Fed is watching, but we also get income and spending tomorrow. And then we kick off jobs week next week with the ADP report on Wednesday. Uh, we'll touch on non-farms the following week because that comes out on Friday, but nonetheless, we'll kick off jobs week as well. All right, before we break for this week, though, a great question of the week, which is basically asking what financial choices that we typically see people make that might keep them from saving, let's say, adequately for retirement. Um, and I would say I'm going to highlight two maybe more simple ones, and then I'm going to bring up controversial might be a little bit of a strong word for it, but maybe a more controversial one as well. So the first is lack of a plan, right? I think uh, a lot of folks that may not be saving enough towards retirement or saving towards retirement just maybe don't understand why they're saving is a big part of it. You got to really understand why you're doing it. Otherwise, it's very difficult to stay disciplined. Uh, and second is, is just an idea of what it actually means for their future, right? Um, if there's no plan in place in terms of what the savings equals in terms of the, the future uh, benefit to you, it's very difficult to stay on track. Second, I would say is automation. So once you have this plan in place, as much as you can, it is great to try and automate some of these saving strategies. So paychecks come in, you know, revenue comes in, whatever it is, you've got an automated system that just puts that away for your future. Uh, you've all heard that saying, pay yourself first, right? That's what I'm talking about here. The idea is the more that this can be out of sight, out of mind, the, the easier it is to make sure that you stick to that plan and nothing kind of derails that, you know, as, as life shifts and things come up over time. The third I want to touch on, again, controversial may not be quite the right word, but I'm going to stick with it, is, uh, is education funding, right? So a lot of folks that we work with, uh, you know, have children, they went to school themselves, they want their kids to go to school. Uh, but obviously, they also want to make sure that they're saving more than enough, if not at least enough for retirement, uh, and maybe even, you know, enhancing what might be left to the kids, maybe after school or whatever it might be as well. So education funding is one that I find really important to weigh. It doesn't mean you can't do both. But if you find yourself in a position where it might be hard to pay for education and su supply or provide for your own retirement, there's no right or wrong answer here, but the way I will pose it is think about it this way. For education funding, there are programs out there. There are loans, there are grants, there are scholarships, you name it, that can help with education funding. For retirement, when we get to retirement age, whether we want to be there or we're, we're kind of forced into it, uh, there is no loan or scholarship or grant to help you through that process. Now, obviously, we've got Social Security 
But outside of that, you've got to make sure that you've done a good job saving over the years to, to make sure to provide for, you know, that next chapter of your life. So it's not to say you can't do both, right? And, and a lot of folks can. So you want to make sure that you weigh that first and foremost. But if it comes down to a decision, uh, just think about it that way. And, and again, if your values dictate that education funding is more important and it, you may want to retire later as a result, totally fine. Uh, but it's important to have that, you know, that, that ammo to understand the decisions that you're making and make sure that you're making the most informed ones if there are choices to be made. So really good question. I hope that was helpful for this week. Uh, be sure to tune in next week. Again, this was a little lighter, but next week we've got inflation, spending, income, and jobs all kind of uh, tying into next Thursday. Have a great upcoming weekend. We'll see you next Thursday at three.